Hello, everybody. My name is Paul Quinney, and this is the Flames Face-Off brought to you by the Hockey Writers. Now, this is a weekly show where we bring together some of our best writers in the Calgary uh, Flames writing pool, and we talk all things Flames. Now, to be sure you don't miss an episode, you can uh, subscribe to this YouTube, YouTube channel. Just hit that little red button at the bottom right of your screen. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook, uh, like this video on YouTube and Facebook, and share it with your friends. And be sure to check out some of the uh, great hockey content that we have here at thehockeywriters.com. So with that, uh, let's get going. Uh, I'd like to introduce first our panel this week. We have Mr. Colton Pankew. Colton, welcome. Yeah, how's it going, guys? Hey, great. Uh, and uh, Brett Krause also. Welcome, Brett. Thank you. Thank you. Back for another episode. Should be fun today. Another episode. Yeah, well, I, I wanted to, you know, mostly focus on the trade deadline tomorrow, uh, less than 24 hours away now, or well, a little over 24 hours away. And um, but before I did that, I wanted to talk about last night. So um, a convincing five nothing win over the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, they've uh, won, the, won their first game in, in 10 uh, starts. Uh, I guess the question I have is um, who were those guys wearing Calgary Flames uniforms and what are they done with the Calgary Flames? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm say that in jest, but it was good to see, but uh, yeah, I didn't recognize them. Uh, Brett, what, what was your take on last night? Uh, yeah, it was a pretty enjoyable game last night. Uh, they played well. I think uh, that, that game is, probably what they've been looking for since you know bringing in Daryl Sutter for this team so um, I mean they played well they got goals from Monaghan, Goudreau and Lindholm like it was 2019 again um, and you know I think the Oilers had 18 or 19 shots last night and you know McDavid and Dreisaitl were an, a non-factor last night so I think they uh, yeah probably their their best game all season in my opinion yeah yeah colton what are your thoughts i mean brett wrote a pretty good article uh earlier in the week saying exactly that that they should split uh monahan and uh go draw up and sure enough those two uh go up on the scoreboard and then the other shifts around were uh um uh monahan um lindholm or Giordano giordano uh playing with tanev um, what were your thoughts? Uh, was Brett right? Is, is this, uh, uh, what we're going to see going forward? These lines sticking? Uh, I made it better for now. Right. Obviously I think that was probably their best game of the season. So, um, I think just getting some change and just kind of, uh, um, it's kind of like a, I don't know, just like a new beginning almost for them. Um, it seemed, yeah. I mean, everything looked like really well last night. I think, uh, the Oilers pretty much go as McDavid and Dreisaitl go, like Brett said, and they were able to really contain them last night. So I think, uh, yeah, you got to stick with it for now. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, let's turn to the trade deadline uh, tomorrow. Um, so I guess, uh, what do you think Trillivian's going to do here? Is, is it any big blockbuster trades, or is it basically unloading a bunch of uh, UFAs for draft picks? So uh, what's your take, uh, Brett? What are we going to see tomorrow? Um, if anything. Yeah, uh, that's what I was just going to say. I mean, mm -hmm. listening to Elliot Friedman there last night during his intermission segments, you know, it he hasn't heard a peep out of Calgary. So I'm not really sure. I mean, I, I'd like to think they'd, you know, maybe get something for uh, Derek Ryan and maybe a, a Josh Levo. Um, for a team maybe that's looking for just to add more guys to their roster, you know, because playoff injuries happen. So, uh, you know, I'd like to see at least one trade happen. Um, I mean, the press conference there a few days ago where somebody asked David Riddick if, <clears throat> what he thought about the trade deadline, and he, I thought he was going to start swearing and yelling at the reporter because, yeah. you know, he, he's all in on Calgary. Like, this is his team. And, I mean, all to him because they they took a chance on him. They found him in the in the Czech Republic there, and you know, so he's probably got a lot of loyalty to this team. So it's hard to say. I mean, uh, 
I'd like to see one thing happen, at least with the UFAs anyway, but uh, I don't, I don't think we'll see any blockbuster uh, trades happening. Yeah. What's your take Colton uh, blockbuster trades or just UFAs out the door? Yeah. I think anything blockbuster involving the flames would be an off season move, maybe around the draft. Yeah. Um, like Brett said, I think those two guys, and then he brought up Riddick too. And I think Riddick's a guy that teams, I think you hear Washington's one. Um, there's a couple other teams that are looking to add to their goaltending depth. So I do wonder if they've gotten any calls on Riddick. I, I think he'd probably be, one of the more valuable pieces they have, obviously Ryan's another, but his contract's a bit bigger. It makes things a little more difficult. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see one of those guys go, but overall, I think it'll be a pretty quiet deadline. Well, Brett mentioned his reaction at that press conference. I forget which game it was, but he, he said, uh, you know, to the reporter, uh, don't try and make a story here. You know, this is my team and I, I'm going to stay, do everything I can to stay here or something to that effect. Uh, I wonder, I wonder what he was thinking. Cause I, I, uh, if I were him, uh, there's no spot for me in Calgary. It's Markstrom all the way, uh, no shot at a number one position for him. Uh, I'd want to go, but he was, he was quite emphatic. That's not what he wanted to do. What do you, what do you think got into him at that? Um, I think just emotions. And like Brett said, they they took a chance on him. They brought him in. Um, It'd be interesting to see if he did stick it out in Calgary. I, I mean, maybe he resigns, but like you said, he's clearly would be the number two guy where I think he's good enough to whether or not a starter, but at least a one, a one B kind of guy. So, and he's obviously not going to get that in Calgary with what Markstrom's being paid. Um, so yeah, I think more just emotion than anything. Yeah. What do you think, Brett? So he's, he's gone. Uh, we all agree with you on that, uh, that one, but uh, where, where will he go? Uh, have you heard anything or? <sighs> Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I kind of saw Colorado as a possible fit, but uh, they got uh, uh, Johansson or Johansson out of Buffalo and then Devin Dubnik yesterday. Uh, so I think they're probably off the list. Um, and I've, Washington, I've heard, might have interest. Um, I'd be interested to see, you know, kind of where he fits because – I think they've they've had just relatively good starts from their even though they have two rookie goaltenders there, um, but I think they've been relatively good. So it's yeah, it's hard to say. It just depends, you know, who thinks they're going to make a run and uh, who even just wants Riddick as even a, a third string guy in case of injury. You know, they might mm. might take take a flyer on him for for a playoff run if they think they're going to go deep and just as a, a sort of insurance. Yeah. So Colton, have you heard anything about Toronto as a possible in terms destination of, for Riddick? You know, I actually hadn't heard anything with Riddick there, but I know they are looking to add goalies. They were saying they really, Michael Hutchinson's a little too close to the number one spot right now than they're comfortable with. Obviously Anderson's still out and then Campbell, like watching a few Leafs games, he was hurt for a while there. And sometimes you see him stretch out for a save and they, they show the replays all the time. It, takes him quite a while to get up sometimes and then he's having a lot of off days on practices and everything so I he's playing really well obviously just set that franchise record um but I think there is some concern over just his durability right now along with Anderson's injury and his shaky play before that too so I mean I haven't heard that but I that would make a lot of sense Mm, yeah um so what what are your thoughts uh Brett do you have any any thoughts on um who we what we might get for, for Riddick? Would it be um, or? Yeah. I mean, looking at the Dubnik trade there, I'd, I'd say arguably that Riddick has been better than Dubnik this year. And, you know, uh, San Jose got a fifth round pick, I believe, and a depth defenseman back, but that was most, probably most likely for uh, cap reasons, just because everyone's so close. I mean, we saw, David Savard go to the Tampa Bay Lightning, but he had to go via Detroit just to make the money work. So, um, yeah, I think I think reasonably you could get a second or third round pick this year from him, and then you might get a depth player, like a taxi squad type player, coming back just to uh, you know make the money work. But um, I, I wouldn't be shocked if they could get a, a second or a third rounder for him. Yeah, yeah, something in the mid mid draft mm-hmm. uh, 
But, you know, I don't know. One, one thing's for sure. They got to do something with them because if they just let them leave town as a UFA, oh, the way they did with Hamannick, uh, I don't think there's going to be very many happy Calgary fans. So, uh, yeah, I agree with you. He's, he's, he's gone. What about Ryan? Um, is he gone as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, much even, you know, a million dollars more on the cap there. And so that could be a little bit hard to make the money work. But um, if, if anybody is getting traded, I think it's going to be Derek Ryan from uh, the Flames. I think he just makes the most sense. You know, he's, uh, everybody's been talking, he's a serviceable, you know, fourth line guy. So I, I think if, for me, my, my guess would be Derek Ryan is the guy that goes if anyone goes. Um, and probably the same type of thing coming back. You might get a taxi squad guy to offset the money and, you know, hopefully a, a mid round ish draft pick for this year. Yeah. Colton, what are your thoughts? Uh, let's assume Ryan's gone. I think that's, it's likely what, uh, what could you see coming back the other way for him? Yeah, basically the same thing Brett said, a taxi squad guy, and then probably a mid to late round pick. I think if you could get a third, fourth rounder, you'll they'll do that no problem. Um, there's lots of rumors. They kind of died down now, but I know the Edmonton Oilers had been looking for a third or fourth line center. There was talk of Luke Glendening out of Detroit, but there was some talk around Ryan as well. Uh, it's kind of died down a bit, but I'd be curious to see if something still happened there. Obviously, they'd have to give a player back, like a taxi squad guy of some sort, just because Edmonton's right at the cap roof right now. But uh, it'd be interesting to see if they could agree on something. Yeah. Well, I don't disagree with either of you. Uh, I mean, he's uh, at best a third or fourth line center. So, you know, what uh, realistically comes back, but you got to get something for him. Um, what's your take, Colton, on on Bennett? Uh, he seems happy now. Everything's... Uh, uh, great for him. He likes playing for Sutter. Sutter loves him. Uh, what'll happen there? Yeah. I mean, it seemed like something that was without a doubt going to happen, like a move with him. Um, and now I don't think it's as pressing. Like I would be pretty surprised if he were to get moved before the deadline, obviously his deals up at the end of the year, but he's still a restricted free agent. So I still I'm hesitant if he'll be a flame headed into next season. But I mean, like you said, with Sutter, the relationship's going well. So I think it'll be something they revisit this off season, but I don't think he'd be gone before the deadline. Yeah. So Brett, if, if that's true, if he, well, let's, uh, you know, let's assume he stays then. What does that mean for, with the expansion draft? I mean, uh, who you got to protect Bennett. So who don't you protect? Oh, uh, I think Bennett's probably a guy they, they would, they might leave unprotected. I'm not sure yeah. it could be an organizational thing that if they decide to, but um, you know, I think if Bennett stays, I don't think you should protect him. I think, you know, Seattle's, I think they're creating a, a really smart front office there. And so I think they'll, they'll know who Bennett is and you know, what he brings to the table. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if, it would be enough for them to take him. But um, yeah, I don't think Sam Bennett's a guy they, they should protect in the expansion draft. Um, just, I think mm. there's guys higher up on the list that need to be protected over him. You can run the risk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Colton, who, who else do you think will uh, not be wearing a, uh, a flame sweater next year? Anybody come to mind? <laughs> I mean, the, there's been some rumors lately, obviously. Uh, you kind of, again, like last off season, right? I think you hear the whole thing about the core and need a culture change. So obviously there's been different things. You hear kind of rumblings on Goudreau, Monaghan, even Giordano, um, just some of that main core that's been there. Again, how realistic it, is it? I, I don't know. Like it's, especially in the flat cap era too, it's, really hard to make these moves and as much as flames fans want these guys gone or some flames fans want these guys gone they're on really good contracts like johnny goodrow i think is 6.75 i could be a bit off there but regardless i mean for a player that's usually able to produce like he is it's, he's on a really good deal so i i think some changes have to come this offseason um and obviously you hear those names a lot so it'll be interesting to see 
Yeah. But Brett, if, if you just focus on the uh, trade deadline, um, you know, who, who else would be gone uh, aside from Riddick and, and uh, Brian? I guess you've got the UFAs. Yeah, I think really your only other probably option is any of your kind of taxi squad guys. Um, you know, maybe like a Dominic Simone who's, you know, hasn't seen the ace in months. Um, just to, for more depth, uh, Josh Levo could be another guy. Um, I wonder, I'm not sure, maybe a guy like Nordstrom too. He could be, uh, you know, teams might be asking on him i know he's you know kind of used almost exclusively as a, a penalty killer um so yeah i i don't think there's going to be i think that's kind of why you know like those guys like friedman are kind of hinting at a quiet deadline for the flames is it's just not nothing flashy i, I think is going to happen and i don't think they're really necessarily going to make a deal unless it just you know is seems much more beneficial for them but yeah uh, it's hard really to you know sell off Derek Ryan for a fourth round pick and you know come out saying you had a good day at the deadline yeah well you know and when you when you're talking some of those so-called low budget UFAs uh it's tough to imagine you'd get anything for them they may just leave town um uh and you'd have to think you know if you took a guy like uh, Stone you know, how do you sign him to a contract when they've got young guns uh, like Mackey in the AHL trying to uh, win a spot on the team? So, I mm. don't know. What do you think, Colton? Would you get anything for the likes of those uh, low-budget UFAs? I think just – I think where they are right now in the stand-ins, I mean, I think we can all agree playoffs are more than likely not happening. Um, so, I, I don't think it would be bad to try and get rid of – a few of those guys, even like a Nesterov on the back end teams are always kind of looking to add defensive depth and then just get some of their younger guys up from, well, I say Stockton, but in Calgary, I guess to uh, come play for the end of the year and just get some NHL experience. I think uh, going forward right now with where they're at, I think that might be the best option, but like Brett said, I, I don't think you're going to get much of anything for them. So it's just kind of, do you want to sell some of those guys for a sixth, seventh rounder, maybe like a, I mean, I guess why not? You're going to lose them for likely nothing in the off season anyway. So it's just kind of whatever tree living's thinking, I guess, of whether or not he sees it worth it and wants to get some of those younger guys playing time. Yeah. It's a bit of a crap shoot. I mean, okay. It's six round uh, draft pick, but I guess there's over, over the history, there's been a lot of uh, lower draft draft picks that uh, have turned into something. So unless you've got the uh, draft picks, you can't really play the game. Um, just wanted to switch gears here, though. We've got, uh, by my calculation, 16 games. Have I got that right? Left? 15 or 16, anyway. Yeah, I think 15. Yeah. Um, I wonder, uh, what do you think they should be doing, assuming that they are out of playoff contention? And I think they are, despite what we saw last night. Um, what do you think the focus should be on the last uh, 15 games? Um, Brett, uh, thoughts on that? If you were the coach, what would you be doing? Um, yeah, I think it'll probably most, I mean, I'd like to see this lineup they had last night, you know, kind of stick around for maybe a couple weeks and see what they can do. Um, you know, I think Goudreau looked a lot better with Lindholm and Kachuk and, uh, even Monaghan looked better with uh, Manjapani and Dubé because uh, those are kind of two guys who have good motors on them and can really move. And like Manjapani is a bulldog behind the net and down low. So I think those are two guys that could really be beneficial for Monaghan. So um, yeah, I think just maybe stick with these lines for now and then just kind of working on what Daryl Sutter wants with this team, you know, continuing to do, um, kind of, or continuing to buy into his system. I know the other day, you know, Sutter said that, uh, Sean Monaghan had so far done everything he'd asked of him and, you know, just hadn't been rewarded yet. And then last night, um, he got a goal. So I think it's just continuing to try and play the way that he wants to. And then, uh, just kind of, you know, 
tweak the lines and see what you got as you go. But um, yeah, I think that's, that's really all you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Colton, what's your take? I mean, uh, would you mix things up further, maybe bring some guys up from the HL that you want to have a look at that could contend next year for a spot? I mean, it, it kind of depends of whether or not they think they're still in this race. Obviously they still have some games against Montreal left. And like Brett said, like last night's game, those, those line combinations seem to really work well. So, I mean, you don't want to mess with the good thing, but I do think at some point you want to kind of try and at least call a few of those guys up and just see how they look. Cause I mean, those are guys that could very well compete for spots next year. Um, obviously some of those depth guys they brought in, like the Nordstrom's, the Levo's that are holding down those spots on the third and fourth lines. I don't think anyone thinks they'll be back next year. So I think getting some of those young guys, some opportunities and seeing how they look could be big and knowing like what your plans are for next season. Yeah. Um, our third man on the show, Greg Tuzowski, he's not here this week, but he wrote a pretty good article on, um, you know, rec- making some recommendations as to what they should do. Uh, one of them was uh, trade Riddick and uh, shut Markstrom down. He, he, he thought he was, uh, was injured. Uh, what do you think, Brett? I, do you, would you bring up, I suppose, at that point, you'd have to promote uh, Domingue and Sparks. Uh, do you see any advantage in that? Um, yeah, I mean, kind of just where they were in the standings or well, are in the standings overall. I mean, I, I would almost lean towards that just cause you could probably get a decent player. If you pick inside the top 10 this year, who could be on your team in two years with, you know, other prospects they have who are, you know, pushing up, um, the charts, but, I think this team still thinks they can make it. So, you know, they every con- press conference they're in, it was I think Giordano was, you know, talking about playoffs. And you know, to their credit, Montreal is kind of faltering. I think uh, really the only thing that they're so far out is because Montreal has nine overtime losses, and so that's uh, kind of if they had you know three or four, kind of around the same as the Flames, they'd be within four points of a playoff spot. So um, I don't think it's going to happen because I think this team still thinks they can make playoffs. Um, But I think if it gets, you know, closer to uh, the end of the season and it doesn't look like they're going to make it, I think, you know, maybe time to shut Markstrom down if, if he is, you know, still playing injured. Yeah. I mean, well, that's a good point. If, if indeed they still believe they can, uh, they can make it, then no, you wouldn't see very much in the way of changes. I suppose the only changes that you'd see is the, the changes they made last night to the lines. Um, hmm. uh, Colton, any, any thoughts on that? I, I uh, hadn't thought about that. You know, if they really believe they can make it, then I guess we won't see very many changes. Yeah. I mean, I think the whole Marshall thing too, you got to be careful. Obviously, I would say he has a say in that they, they found their franchise goalie now. And I think if you just tell him at some point, we're shutting you down, that might ruffle some feathers. I mean, by all accounts, he's a competitor. He still wants to play. And it could have just been a cold streak more than anything. I mean, last night he was didn't have to do a ton, but I think that'll go a long way in turning around his confidence and maybe he'll be able yeah. to bring him on a bit of a run here. Yeah. No, I think what Greg, yeah, Greg probably had in mind to the, there's no shot at the postseason, and yeah. he's injured. So, hey, give him a rest. But uh, that I agree with you. That's not, that's not going to happen as long as they think they've still got a shot. Um, wanted to turn lastly to uh, Sutter. Um, I compared his um, last 15 games with uh, Ward's uh, last 15 games. Turns out. Uh, Sutter's record was six and nine for 400 and uh, Ward's was seven and eight for 467. So, uh, you know, Sutter really hasn't made uh, the, the Flames a playoff contender, nor arguably has he made the team better. And so the thought was, um, you know, is buyer's remorse setting in in Calgary? Uh, Brett, what's your take on that? Uh, not that they're going to change a coach, but uh are they, are there some regrets? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say so. I think there's a lot of factors right now, you know, like 
Monaghan and Goudreau weren't playing well. Well, nobody was really playing well. Um, Markstrom, you know, could have been, could be playing injured, you know, just hasn't looked as good as he did in the start of the season. Um, so, and I, I think, yeah, there's a lot of other factors as well. I think um, had, you know, Markstrom been playing like he did at the start of the season, I think we're probably looking at a, a playoff race right now. I think, uh, you know, some of some games, you know, he cost the team, but other games, the team, you know, cost him a, a win. So uh, I think there's, it's just, yeah, you know, too, a little too early to tell. It's only like 16 games or however many. And um, I think there's, there's things that they're doing right. Um, but I just, yeah, it did, didn't seem from the get go that they were going to get anywhere under Jeff Ward and, you know, some they've had some games under Sutter where they they look like okay, maybe this is a team that can, you know, make a, a run at the playoffs. But um, it's just been a little difficult this season, just from multiple uh, sort of areas. Yeah, Colton, what are your thoughts? Uh, you know, I've I've seen some commentator, commentators make the point that uh, you know it's kind of bizarre uh, when Ward left, uh, no one was calling. Uh, for Calgary to see more of uh, Richie and uh, Levo and Ryan and so forth and less of Monaghan and Tuchuk and Gaudreau. Uh, but that's precisely what's happened. But then that stands to reason because Sutter's style is to roll four lines. Um, any, what's your, what are your thoughts on uh, Sutter and the, the results so far? Yeah, I mean, I think if there's any remorse, that would be a pretty concerning thing just in terms of tree living and hiring him. I think it's way too soon to have any type of remorse there. Um, Obviously, it hasn't been great under him, but at the same time, I think you have to remember, like, with this condensed schedule, he really hasn't gotten much practice time with the team or any time to kind of put in his philosophies and everything. So while certain things are going on, like they're obviously doing video and stuff, they haven't really had a lot of time to actually work on it. So I think it'll be interesting next season when he gets a training camp with the group and everything like that. And hopefully the schedule is back to normal. And um, then I think it'll be more fair to kind of judge how he's doing and how the team's doing under him. I think this year is just so odd that I, I wouldn't really look into how they're performing under him and say that it's any reflection of him. I think the team itself is just struggling. Yeah. So he's safe. Uh, but you don't think true living is uh, Colton. I I'm referring to that article you wrote earlier in the week, basically saying he's in the hot seat. So what do you think is going to happen when in the off season with uh, the GM? Yeah. I, so I, my take on it at the end was, I was saying, I, I still think he should, get another shot next season Um, because he's done some really good things there that are obviously being overlooked right now because of the team struggling, which happens in any market, obviously. Um, So yeah, I I do think though, like we've said before, he's been there for seven years now and there's been basically no playoff success, very little. Um, But again, I, I wanted to make sure I was like, I said in that, that it doesn't fall on him. Obviously he's not the one playing, but I think at times he was a bit too patient when it came to the core and maybe a switch, uh, whether it was this past off season after the 2018, 19 one where they had that great season and then just blew up in the playoffs. Um, so yeah, I do think he's on the hot seat. I think it's a huge off season for him. And if they don't turn things around next year, I think he'll be gone. Yeah. Brett, what's your take on true living? Uh, if, if things don't turn around next year, um, yeah, I think, you know, probably the exact same thing as Colton. It's just, I think this is probably his, his last bullet in the chamber was hiring Sutter. And, um, I think he's going to have to, uh, make a move. Uh, I've, I think I said last episode that, you know, he's going to make a, like a Dougie Hamilton type trade when he brought in Lindholm and Hannafin. I think he's got to do something like that to really shake things up now who goes out i don't know and maybe nobody big goes out but he somehow manages to bring another piece in but um yeah i think this just because this season there was you know so many so many outside factors that we as you know the public don't even probably know about 
just with COVID and because we don't even know how, you know, the players kind of had, had it dealt with, you know, living through a pandemic and, you know, probably being away from families that live in other places. So I think next year, if, you know, everything is back to normal, hopefully that, yeah, I think that'll be a real a test for him to see what this team's made of. And, you know, yeah. maybe Markstrom gets back on track after an off season. And so, yeah, I, I think there's just a lot of factors both on the ice and off the ice, but um, yeah, I think this, this summer is going to be a big one for him because if he does nothing and the team goes the same way, yeah, I think that that'll be the, the end of his tenure here. Well, one uh, big change that uh, Calgary fans are speculating about, at least on social media, is uh, Jack Eichel coming to town. And as it happens, Colton, you wrote a piece on exactly that, um, laid out a bit of a roadmap for bringing him to town. Uh, what do you think? Has anything changed in your mind? Uh, do we have enough to offer Buffalo to get uh, Eichel in town? Well, that's, that's kind of the question. It's like one of those things, obviously it's, if he does get moved out of Buffalo, it'll have to be for a huge haul. Like he's one of the best young players in the game. Um, so it, it really depends how much of your own team do you want to risk giving up in order to bring him in? Cause obviously he, like, he's a great player, but he's had no winning success in Buffalo, not really to his fault, at least in my opinion, I think just the team constructed around him has been pretty bad, but um, I, I think it's, worth checking in on I think anytime a player is available like that even if you're not that serious it doesn't hurt to make some calls see what they're kind of looking at because I mean people are lots of fans are wanting to change to this core and I mean what bigger one than bringing in a player like Jack Eichel to go up against Connor McDavid however many times a season it would be pretty exciting so I think it was just a exciting yeah. piece or exciting idea that was brought up so Brett give me uh give me the odds on Eichel coming to town 50-50, 60-40, what do you think it is? <laughs> Ooh, uh, I think about maybe like 500 to 1 maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I think it's just, a, a, like Colton said, you'd need a big haul to bring a guy like that in. Um, your next issue is, you know, figuring out your cap space because, right. you know, Giordano and Lucic take up $12 million combined. Um, and so that's another difficulty. And then, um, the other thing is you, so you have your, you know, a number one franchise center, but what did you give up and how many holes now do you have around him? I mean, if you can, if you still have Lindholm and Kachuk and Manjapane afterwards, um, that's like fairly decent, but you know, there's still some holes on the wing and, is it yeah. going to be, can you find someone, you know, who elevates those lines even more or can come in and play on those lines? So I think that's, yeah, it's a, a lot of moving parts in a, a deal like that. But I mean, like Colton said, I think you, you got to check in when a team is desperate. Like I think the Buffalo Sabres are because you could, you know, somehow kind of manage to get a, a deal that would could work in your favor for a, a player like that. Well, if you don't play, you got uh, no chance at all. So, um, well, thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, unfortunately, we've run out of time, but as always, a great discussion. And thanks, everybody, for joining us again this week. Uh, we'll be back next week with another episode of the uh, Flames Faceoff. And in the meantime, uh, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, like this video on YouTube and Facebook and share it with your friends. And be sure to check out the hockeywriters.com uh, tomorrow where you'll find uh, the weekly edition of the Flames Weekly column and where we look at everything that's happened in the previous week and uh, we take a look ahead at what's uh, going to happen uh, next week. And be sure to check out some of the great hockey content that we have here at the hockeywriters.com. Until next week.